Good morning. I get great joy from watching politically correct people doing something or saying something that is not politically correct. And then the group that they belong to will push them away. Yeah, I, this is great to watch. It's a beautiful thing. Because many of you experienced this, right? Uh, and I myself experienced it. You know, I was never politically correct, but I experienced this. The group pushed me out very, very quickly. Yeah. I didn't belong there, you see. And when this happened to these uh, politically correct people, it's a beautiful thing. And sometimes it makes them think. You know? They say, I said this or I did this and then this group that I want to be part of pushed me out. You know? sometimes, sometimes it makes them open their eyes, actually. Uh, I have two examples of this. The first one is Ulf Kristersson. He's the chairman of the moderate party here in Sweden. It's one of the bigger parties. And this guy is a globalist. And he's politically correct. To the core. Yeah. But now he did something, you see. And he was sort of forced to do it. He was forced to talk to the chairman of the nationalist party. And this is a big no-no in Sweden. The reason he was forced to do it was that, or is, that uh, the Nationalist Party in Sweden is now becoming the biggest party in Sweden. And uh, if the moderates wants to have anything to do with power or government in the future, they just have to talk to them. That's right. So that's what he did. And then the reaction came from the lefties, and it was tough. And this guy, he didn't like it. He was upset about it. He wrote about this uh, on a post in, on Facebook. And I'm just going to read parts of it. He says, The other day, Minister of Culture and Democracy, Amanda Lind, accused me or, and the moderate party of putting power before human rights and of not standing up for the foundations of democracy. She referred to Hitler Germany and the Holocaust. <laughs> and then he said, it was obviously no coincidence. Today, Stefan Löfven, the chairman, the socialist PM, accuses me of not listening to those who survived the Holocaust. He says, it's judgmental and unworthy in a way I didn't think was possible. Yeah. Isn't this nice? This guy deserves it. Yeah. And uh, it's good to see. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen here. He did something bad, right? And he thinks that he did something good, which he did. He talked to this nationalist party. Yeah. yeah, fascinating. And the other example is another Swede. Uh, her name is Jessica. She's a TV host. You see her often on television. And she was, took part in a podcast. And she talked about a ba basketball game that she... Her daughter was playing basketball, apparently, and uh, Jessica was there as the mother. And this basketball game took place in Husby. And this is a, a sort of a no-go zone, a suburb of Stockholm. And she didn't like it. And on this podcast, she told the truth about it. And this is a big no-no. You shouldn't do this. And, you know, she said... Uh, the area is a little messy. Uh, you, want, you might not want to hang out there yourself in the evenings. That's what she said. Uh, she also said that she perceived Husby, this place, as insecure and that the opposing team, which was from Husby apparently, uh, of course it was, uh, they repeatedly shouted whore and attacked the referee, and they were behaving badly. That's what she said on a podcast. 
and the reaction against this was of course very strong. No? See? She was not doing her job. She was not politically correct. So they try to push her away now. Yeah. So uh, they attacked her. Called her a racist, of course. Mm. Uh, and now she is trying to remedy this. She took the story out. She deleted it from the podcast. And then they explained, you know, there were two girls. Uh, they explained the, they were only joking. <laughs> it's pathetic. Mm. Yeah. I want much, much more of this stuff. Okay. Be good. Bye.